We're at the Santorini Passive House, and this place is unfortunately getting worse and worse and worse. And behind me, you see a whole lot of worse. This portion of the project has literally been destroyed entirely by water infiltration. Termites, rot, mold, long-term decay, rusting nails, it's a big giant mess. We often get asked, how do we determine if a house is built correctly or not? Whether it's a house that's an existing house or an old house that is being remodeled. We can determine that by looking for some very simple things. Firstly, we wanna look at how the framing is done. So let's go look at some things that we look at often to make sure that we're seeing a good house. So behind me, we have a shear wall. In, in the Bay Area and in places where we have lots of hurricanes or earthquakes, shear walls are super important because they keep a house from falling over if we have an earthquake or high winds. And shear walls are defined by two specific things. We have hold down bolts, which you can see over here, and another one behind me over here. And then they're spanned by plywood on top of studs. Now that those two hold downs hold that wall down into position and keep it from rocking. And then the plywood, kind of like a house of cards, if you have studs like this, they can easily fold over. But if you have plywood joining those studs, they keep the studs from falling over. So a shear wall resists that lateral movement. And what we see here is that when we have places that you can't see easily, you really find out what kind of quality you're talking about. And you see in this shear wall where we have this really, really important plywood layer, we actually have it broken. They use just small pieces of plywood to fill in this space. Small pieces of plywood do not make up a shear wall. It has to be one big piece of plywood, or if it's multiple pieces of plywood, the, all the edges have to be blocked and it has to be essentially an effective single unit of plywood. Here, they've cut a two foot long channel in that plywood. That will completely reduce, it'll actually eliminate all structural integrity of the shear wall. They're reducing the safety of this entire house by using scrap plywood here. That's a huge no-no. And if the building inspector would have seen that, they would have absolutely made them change that. But because it was behind the landing of the staircase, it was hidden. That's a definite red flag. As we are doing deeper investigation into this hold down, I actually see that they didn't even put the hold down bolt on right. Now, if we look over here, we'll see that these bolts that come through this post right here, we see about two threads. The requirement is three threads of this bolt to be sitting above the, the nut in order for this to have the proper strength. Because each one of those threads as it wraps around that nut require, is required for the structural integrity of that connection. And we'll see about two here. We see one here. Look at this. We don't see any threads. In fact, I can stick my finger a quarter of an inch into that nut. Actually, it's by three eighths of an inch into that nut. That hold down's not doing anything. So the reason that they didn't even worry about the plywood because they didn't put the hold down in to begin right with the first place. This is a disaster. One of the most important things about any house is making sure that you have your vertical load or the gravity of the house and the building materials properly supported. This beam is so important because not only does it support the entire front of the family room of the house to the street, but it's supported by this giant big steel collecting beam. And you'll see this big giant glue lamb beam is supported by this hanger right here. The problem is that hanger is not hanging on anything. It's just sitting there. They put all of the support on this little overhang right here. There's about an inch and a half of this beam sitting on the bottom flange of the steel. This is earthquake country. Houses move. If an earthquake came, and move this beam an inch and a half, which is very easy because it's eight feet up in the air and nothing else is supporting it, it falls off and the entire front of the house falls down. <laughs> That's not good. Unfortunately, that giant beam with the bad hanger is compensated or not compensated by this completely wrong hanger for the application. How do I know it's the wrong hanger? Well, First of all, the hanger is supposed to be as wide as the wood that fits in it, not wide enough to sit a whole nother three quarter inch piece of scrap plywood in between it. That's doing nothing except holding up space. This is a completely wrong hanger, wrong application, 
This is not going to work in an earthquake. There's no nails and no plywood connecting this hanger to this floor joist. Like this is complete incompetence. And unfortunately, it also got past the inspector. We're at the top of that same shear wall we had in the beginning video. And we see above us a white plate. Now that white plate is covering a giant hole that they put into the top plate of this wall to fit this plumbing pipe. Instead of cutting a hole in the top plate, they just gouged a four inch deep channel in this lumber that's five and a half inches wide, leaving an inch and a half of material left over. And instead of correcting it the correct way, which is removing that plate and putting a new plate in there to plumb your plumbing pipe up there, they just covered it with a essentially a, a piece of metal to stop people from putting nails in there. If they were really trying to retain the entire structural integrity of this shear wall, that plate would be about two and a half feet wide and a lot thicker and have about 50 times more nails. This shear wall is completely worthless. So not only do we have no accurate hole down, we have no functional plywood, and now we have no functional top plate. There is nothing wrong with this shear wall. And look at this. This is a shear wall on the main axis of this house, providing structural stability for this entire front of the house. When this shear wall goes, likely the rest of the house will follow. One of the first things they treat you at carpenter school is how wood should go together. And you should know that wood has three essential components. We have manufactured wood, which is largely dried and glued together in extremely stable and extremely stiff. We have normal wood, which is dimensional wood, and you have wood that's used the long way and wood that's used the vertical way. So the vertical way would be studs, and the long way, the horizontal way, would be like floor joists and roof joists. And that you really shouldn't mix and match all of those woods because they move differently. So here we have a TJI, and that TJI is an eye joist, and that eye joist is very solid and very stable. It's glued together, it's dried, it's plywood. This isn't moving at all. Then right next to it, we have a floor joist, and that floor joist is literally right next to the eye joist, but that floor joist is not stable, it's not dry, and it doesn't just stay in place. It actually shrinks. And you see this plate right here has actually gone down. And then you see right next to it, a vertical piece of wood, which also is not stable and also is not straight, but it also changes differently. It moves differently depending on the amount of moisture as the floor joist, as the eye joist here, and as the floor joist here. So we have three different materials all in the same place doing the same function, but they don't work well together. This is a no-no. Any good carpenter knows that you can't mix and match the materials like this. And what we see is this floor system right here is actually sloped because these materials have moved differently. This is just knucklehead carpentry 101. Above me, we have a giant pop-up in the roof. And this is actually a really cool vaulted space that used to be over the kitchen. And it's really important in the future design of this house. Unfortunately, it wasn't done correctly. Now, the trusses were originally designed to have this pop-up, and I, we can tell that because they have expanded pieces of wood that form the basis for putting nails and hangers onto the supports that go between them. And we can see here that we've got these big two by 12s that are sistered together with brackets, these metal hangers below them. And that makes a solid foundation for building the structure up above. But right above me, they forgot all the metal hangers. They're just toenailed in place. And that doesn't work. Like you have to use all the hardware. So when I see things that in one place are done a completely different way than another place, and the second place doesn't make any sense, that means that people weren't paying attention. We can see here that this roof structure has been rebuilt at least three different times. We had the neighbor come over and tell us that this house has been the source for in the 25 years that she's been here, the source of many, many, many construction projects where they've removed the entire roof three different times. And it's all because the people that originally built it did a shitty job and didn't do it right. And the subsequent owners have had to fix the crappy work for the over the last 30 years. That's unacceptable. In California, 
Shear walls are everything and plywood is the most important thing we put up. It's often the most important thing that the inspectors look at. They wanna make sure that the plywood is nailed up correctly and that they're gonna get the full strength out of this plywood. Now, what is important about plywood? Well, specifically, it's the plywood thickness and it's the nailing pattern. Often, the structural engineer will put a very precise nailing pattern. You have to have two rows of nails, three inches apart, staggered, on the bottom piece of material so that you get the proper attachment of that plywood to that material. Now, one of the most important things is, first, you don't overdrive your nails, meaning you don't put your nails so far into the plywood that it stops having functional effect. And we see here that we have a lot of nails that are right on the surface. That's actually really good. That's what we want. We don't want these overdriven nails that are so deep that they penetrate this top layer of plywood and they undermine the connection between the wood underneath and the plywood. We see that nails properly driven sit right on the surface of the plywood and don't bury beyond the plywood. But right here, we can barely see the nail here. And then this whole row, all of the nails are overdriven. That means that that connection is not proper. Secondly, we have to have proper, what's called perimeter nails. That means nails on the bottom and on the top of the plywood and then on every stud around the perimeter of that plywood. And that, those nails cannot be any closer than 3 8 of an inch to the edge of the plywood sheet or they don't function at all. They're not useful and we have to put another nail above it and below it to compensate. Right here is a seam between two panels of plywood and we see that these nails not only like this nail right here is not even in this piece of plywood, it's in the seam in between these two pieces of plywood. And this nail is right on the edge, right next to this other one that's on the seam. Like we maybe have four nails out of 20 here that are nailed correctly. This is a completely useless interaction with this piece of plywood, and this will not function in this shear wall, meaning that this piece of plywood is not doing its job. And that is again, undermining the structure integrity of this entire piece of wall and this entire shear wall. And this is a three-story tall shear wall, meaning it's very, very critical to the integrity of this whole building. Now, if you want to know more about this project specifically, you can watch our videos. But general, there's so many things that are done wrong on this project that we can't fill a singular video with it. We'd have to make many, many, many videos. And so proper building technique is not just about these nails or about those shear walls. It's about the entire assembly. And so make sure that your building inspectors do a good job. Make sure you hire a good builder that's going to make sure that this work is done correctly. This is just to give you a taste of how we build properly and how we make sure that our projects are built forever and ever and how you can make sure that your house is built to last the test of time. If you're interested in learning more about building science, please hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way.